gone. It's a one run.
Shine your light on me And can you shine your light on me Cause when my love sets sail It's always doomed to fail Will you
All right, everybody, what is up? Welcome to Nexus Commentaries tonight. We, we are bringing you the D Division II semifinals between you face Braxis, the division leader, and the Lizard Wizards. Both teams have fought very hard to get to this point. We're excited to see how they match up, both hosting very impressive rosters, and uh, especially you face Braxis, who we've covered more, uh, have employed some very interesting strategies. So I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to get to the semifinals of D2, there is absolutely uh, no room for error. So this is going to be uh, one hell of a matchup, I'm expecting. Um, welcome all... <laughs> Everybody who has followed us over from Kyberries and Selenity's stream, we appreciate you guys watching tonight. We hope you uh, like what you see tonight and uh, hit that follow button and uh, or maybe even the subscribe button. Get that sweet first blood emote we've got going on. So we're just getting the match set up right now and uh, it looks like we need to get DJ in the ob spot. And uh, get the last member of Lizard Wizards on uh, in the game. Definitely. Actually, I'm going to leave the lobby real quick. Oh, all right. That's why we got the host. That's sweet. So if we can figure out how to switch... Me Looks like every, everybody is here. It does seem that everybody is indeed here. And our first game, Braxis Holdout. It's not the same old stuff we've been casting the past week. Yeah, definitely. Braxis Holdout, always a very fun map. A lot of very interesting fights take place often quite early on this map. Uh, wrestling control of the beacons often can uh, lead to some early advantage, if, especially if you're able to get that 100-0. So both teams are going to be looking to avoid that for sure. Definitely, definitely. Um, and this does lend itself to some unique picks. Rag or not Rhaegar, Rhaegar is a normal pick. Who am I talking Rexar. Uh, let me check my. Yeah, Rexar here. is. Uh, yeah. Oh. One of our mics is too loud. I'm not sure which one. It is probably me. I will uh, turn that down just a bit. Ah, uh, Bacon, it's uh, it's your boy. <laughs> And it looks like we've got both teams ready. Casters are ready, and we're getting ready to jump into Braxis Holdout. Absolutely, and I'm excited for this. Let's see how this turns out between the Lizard Wizards. I can't turn my my mic up, up any <laughs> louder. Lizard Wizards with the first ban here. Let's see what they're thinking. Uh, both teams probably very well aware of one to another. And uh, it, it looks like we're having a few audio issues. Apologize for that. Uh, Kel'Thuzad, first ban coming out for Lizard Wizard. Yeah, first, uh, that's that's no real big surprise right there, Lizard uh, Wizards. Uh, uh, banning out that Kel'Thuzad. It's a normal ban at this point. You don't want Kel'Thuzad wrecking havoc on your team. He's annoying to deal with. He hits like a kitten early game and then just goes absolutely insane after that. Uh, after he finishes that Master of the Cold Dark quest. And... <laughs> okay, I'm hoping this fixed my audio from being too loud. Uh, that might have. Uh, we'll see here in, a two, in two minutes what the chat says i i have done the adjustments that i normally do uh and i like this ragnaros band coming out of you face praxis that's a smart band uh, ragnaros gets so much value despite not being in the meta right now he's one of those niche picks for this map now so 
Yeah, for sure. And uh, Brax is definitely his uh, stomping ground. And we see the Garrosh pit come out for uh, Witches. Very, mm. very uh, relevant tank in the meta right now. His ability to toss and, and grab and people keep him in the rain, keep him in his range and uh, disrupt uh, disrupt positioning of the enemies is very, very um, strong right now. Yeah, it really is. He's. I keep saying this. I keep saying this that, but uh, his Garrosh is easily the best early game tank in the game. Like it's so hard to deal with Garrosh when you're trying to push a tower early, and he just checks you in a first pick, Morales. Yeah, Lieutenant Morales, uh, recently undergoing some changes, has an energy bar to manage now instead of uh, mana. Uh, she's fairly um, consistent in her healing ability, so uh, she should be strong enough to solo if that's what they're thinking. But we are in a double support meta, so we'll probably see someone back her up. Uther and Genji come out. Uh, team's looking very strong on the side of Lizard Wizards. Yes, uh, I love the Uther Genji pickup here on the side of <laughs> on the side of uh, Lizard Wizards right here. <laughs> uh, Dragon Blade, Divine Shield, nothing to sneeze at. It's gonna it's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna just cause all kinds of havoc. But the Anubarak on the side of uh, you face Braxis could pose some problems. Uh, cocooning that Genji the minute he jumps in, if he's not divine shielded beforehand, is going to be really, really problematic. Yeah, trapping Genji in the back. Although he he has plenty of escape moves, so one of the more mobile heroes to get away from, from uh, some traps, but a lot of the times that cocoon is a, indeed a death sentence. Very much so. We see a KT ban, and I, I, I respect that. I like that ban. Well, Kalthuzad's, uh, or I'm sorry, Kalthus's, uh wave clear is very, very strong, and um, that's something that's very valued here on Brax's holdout. So we see the uh, Zagara ban on the other side. Zagara, very strong solo pusher. Not surprised to see her get banned out. She uh, can be very disruptive with Maw as well, so they probably didn't want to get set up in uh, double traps there with Anubarek's uh, cocoon potential. Yeah, definitely. We, uh... You definitely don't want Zagara just all over the map, taking your camps, taking basically everything that isn't nailed down, and then giving your team vision on top of that for the entirety of the game. Uh, I, I respect that ban out of Lizard Wizards. It's a, it's a good, smart ban. Indeed. So just waiting to see here what you face Braxis is thinking now. Um, they didn't. They definitely have uh, shown a dominance on this map thus far throughout the times that we've casted them, so they really know what they want. Mm, absolutely, and really, I'd like to see maybe a, a butcher. <laughs> butcher <laughs> and Tehran with the Nubrak. This is a very strong strategy. The blow-up potential is immense, especially with Hunter's Mark down on a target. Butcher runs in. He can uh, he either ultimate is honestly a strong choice uh, in that situation. Obviously, Chain to the Rocks keeps him trapped, and uh, Furnace Blast will apply a massive burst of damage. So. I'm sure they'll figure out which one they want to use, but both have strong potential behind Tyrand. I like the Leoric. I like the Leoric pick. Uh, uh, they're kind of dive heavy at this point, and March of the Black King, which seems to be the standard right now, will get a whole lot of value. And we see the Arthas picked up at the end for that that solo lane presence, but I don't know. I'm I'm kind of feeling the uh, the Lizard Wizards right here. I think they've. They've got the better overall comp. They've got the... They, yep. I think they'll just outlast um, uh, you face Braxis in fights. Well, you have to remember, you face Braxis did take double support here with uh, the backing of Tehran and L Lieutenant Morales. Now, Tehran's healings aren't healing isn't the strongest, but it is significant, especially when the other team does not have double support. And Uther's uh, cooldowns are notoriously long. Yeah, uh, there you always joke around about heals always being on cooldown whenever you play Uther, so uh, it's not a big surprise, if I'm honest, to see uh, see this uh, this be a worry of yours. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, but they did take Jaina as their last pick on the side of Lizard Wizards, which I, I believe is a very strong counter pick to heroes like Butcher and Anubarak. If she's able to position herself correctly and slow them down, it really hinders their effectiveness. So it was a really strong pick there at the end by Lizard Wizards. Don't forget to break your hanger before uh, we come back to you, okay? You have to. I'm s- I, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> Chat really <laughs> wants you to break that hanger. But I want to note, the, for the first time ever, we have perfect portrait coordination well that's what it takes to get to the finals anyways here we go on the blue side we have you face braxis playing tyrand we have winterheart on lieutenant morales we have you're my hero on the butcher we have emperor juice on arthas we have Glouds, and on anubarek we have midi man and on the side of the lizard wizards we have <laughs> itn oh. on whoa we're Ooh. trying to figure out if Jaina was banned or not. If our... Some confusion. Uh oh. Oh no. Okay, so, anyways, Atian on the Loric Salinity, on the Jaina Kai Berries, on the Uther Vivance, on the Garrosh and Beckwin, on the Genji, the Pro Genjo. <laughs> Jimmy. Lane splits pretty common right here. Leoric and Arthas opting for the solo lane while the other four uh, settle in on the bottom, ready to uh, try and soak some experience here. Absolutely. We see the bird come out from earlier from the uh, Tehran. Looking to stack up already. Not Arthas old. in the middle of a tough matchup in the top lane with Leoric. We'll have to keep our eye on that. He struggles mightily in the early game. With that percentage-based damage that comes out of the Leoric, that is such a problem for him. So Both yep. teams just trying to play it safe right now, soak experience, make sure they're not uh, overcommitting to anything too early. Yeah, we see, Very uh, smart. Yeah, we see Butcher trying to get those stacks. Ooh, nice uh, grenade onto the Vivance right there. We'll be keeping an eye on those Butcher stacks. So what do you think the win objective here for Lizard Wizards is? Because to me, it feels like they're going to need 10 to really come online. Yeah, I mean, it's don't fall too far behind. Get key pickoffs uh, in the early game, utilizing the Leoric. Like right here, he's going to have to burn that uh, Burrow charge to get away and does a good job of doing it and staying alive. Gets healed back up between the... Morales and the Tyrande. Um But ju yeah, just don't fall too far behind. Look for those key pickoffs with uh, Garrosh right there. And uh, once they hit 10, it's off to the races. Beacons are about to come online here for both teams. We see Leoric moving into position, immediately capping the top one. And uh, both teams are looking to uh, try and cap the bottom one. You face Braxis is successful in. Uh, the early cap on the bottom. Yeah, and surprisingly, compared to previous games, there's been no first blood yet. Usually there's a quick first blood of some, car some kind. Uh, nice attempt to capitalize on the damage, but we see the Butcher going in on the Genji. It's going to be first blood for the side of you face Braxis. There's that early damage blow up potential I talked about with Tehran. That Hunter's Mark just absolutely eviscerating Genji with Butcher right behind it. Butcher gets tossed right into the wall, though, right now. Garrosh is putting on a ton of damage. Butcher puts down the Butcher brand, starts healing up. He's going in on Garrosh. Garrosh is going to go down. Nice. What a turnaround up. by Butcher there. Yeah, that should have easily been a kill onto the Butcher right there with his low health pool, but manages to brand the Garrosh right there and heals up just enough to survive those tower shots. If I were you face Praxis, I would start looking to try to rotate onto this Lee Orc. The Loud's having a lot of trouble as Arth is trying to recapture this beacon. It's not really working out in his favor, but you face Praxis just happy to uh, push out the tower shots drained of ammo at this point. Yeah, just trying to get the experience from this tower and create any sort of advantage they can get. If they can get sevens before the uh, before Lizard Wizards, they'll have an easier time wrestling away these beacons. Yeah, definitely. Lizard Wizards going in for the bottom beacon, though, right now. They have the superior positioning, and Tehran's taking a lot of damage from Jaina, but she's getting the heal from Morales. Butcher goes in, starts putting damage all over Jaina. Jaina has to retreat. Anubrek dives in the back. Highberry's on Uther, trying to keep the Garrosh safe, moving in and out and healing the team. 
Looks like they're gonna disengage there. Yeah, nice too... little, yeah, nice little bird for some extra damage on the Selenity just now. Let's take a look at this butcher, uh, butcher build. He's going the uh, axe build, chop meat and flail axe, which is uh, very interesting. A nice uh, pull from the garage Q right there, uh, groundbreaker. And we're gonna we're gonna take another quick look at this top lane. Arthas keeps getting cheeky and trying to take the bottom lane. We got action on the bottom, or at the top beacon. We got action on the bottom lane, though. Our Anubarek's taking a lot of damage. The Morales is trying his, her best to keep him up, and uh, she's able to get him out of there. Yeah, nice attempted stun right there from uh, Winterheart, but he is in a load of hurt. Nice kill onto the Tehran right there, but Genji goes down in response, and you know that Emperor Chu Oh, he does get the meat from that right there. Just in time that follow-up grenade from morales was so clutch on the genji catching genji right behind the wall when he thought he was safe jimmy in uh, in our ob slot is already triggered having flashbacks from a from a while ago <laughs> on the bottom lane it looks like you face braxis has got pretty good control of this ooh, ooh, the, but in top uh looks like arthas might actually be able to take this leoric down Nice kill from Delouds right there to probably secure that bottom be or that top beacon as a uh, Blizzard Wizards is going uh, to take that top beacon. At least they tried, but instead Jaina goes down. Good charge from the Butcher right there, and it looks like they're going to get another one on the Genji. Body blocks everywhere right there. Wow, that was really, really well played by Uface Braxis. Getting control of the top lane at, right as they were able to take a team fight in the bottom lane gave them a real strong advantage in this beacon phase. Yeah, it definitely uh, did come out in their favor right there, but that Leoric uh, playing a little cheeky right there uh, manages to take back the top beacon for for you uh, for Lizard Wizards just now, but. The Louds going just ham on this guy. Chop, chop, chop. Yeah, Ation having having struggles with Arthas here in the top lane, but Arthas is running low on resources. His mana is very low, and if he stays here in the Strained Soul, he could end up on the wrong side of this trade. Yeah. Uther oh. dies in the bottom lane. <laughs> yeah, not not the one kind of thing you want to see happen. But the extra healing coming out just now. The uh, Warbreaker quest is now finished for. A garage, so that's going to be a dangerous amount of cooldown on his Q. Does grab Winterheart, eats a Blizzard in the meantime. And uh, this everything has been... just, yeah, just kind of re everybody just kind of resets, but you face Braxis does have a, a level lead at this point. And don't forget, we are seven minutes into this match, and the first beacon phase has not ended. Both teams are, are really holding on to the beacons with the slight edge going to Uface Braxis. Jaina does go down once again to the aggression from Uface Braxis, uh, just giving Butcher, uh, scarily enough, seven minutes in, has the glowing axe, and he is now fully stacked. We're going to follow Emperor Juice here real quick as he moves in to uh, take this top beacon and probably get a gank on the Leoric. No, he skips the beacon. Oh, the, the hunter. Ooh, hoo -hoo, the lambs to the slaughter misses due to the unstoppable status of Leoric just there. Speaking of ultimates, we have Tehran taking shadow stuff. Oh, we got a, too much of a fight going on right now. Garrosh tosses Tosses Tehran away and pulls her back in. Tehran's still being healed up by the Morales. The sustain is real on the side of Uface Braxis. Garrosh taking a lot of damage. Nubrick goes in for the stun and deletes him. Yeah, Kyberis. Yeah, she gets popped out, but here comes the Butcher. Decides to try to charge on the Genji and uh, decides against it in the end. You face Braxis showing why they have that. <laughs> they have Braxis in their name because they have been dominant on this map. Another uh, grenade from the Morales just now. Is she going the grenade build? Clear, blast shield, physical therapy, stim drone. But here we go. Here comes the Zerg wave. Yeah, they've gotten uh, not much damage done on the top lane. Obviously, it was just allowed up there by himself with Leoric. But they are going to commit to a full push with this. And why not? They've got the level advantage and a full wave behind them. Yeah, not to mention that fully stacked Butcher just now. 
Um, any any kill at this point is gonna just make him even more scary. Yeah, with every hero kill, he gets stronger and stronger, and as the game wears on, Butcher becomes that much more dangerous. They're smartly playing behind their wave, not trying to overcommit for this keep. They know they didn't have a lot of push off, and the, the strength behind this wave, though, they have the 100 lead. Ooh, and they go in and they get Garrosh with that stun. Yeah, a lot of damage from Tehran coming out. Ooh, here comes the uh, Unstoppable from the Leoric, the Divine Shield onto him as well to keep him safe, and... That was a nice uh, little disengage. Butcher, uh-oh, it's time for some uh, Stim Drone Butcher. He gets the kill onto Uther just now. Uther healing everybody up, but Butcher getting the benefit of that Stim Drone helps bring down that keep at the top, and they still have two Guardians left over. The Ring of Frost came down, but there was nobody left to follow up, and they were able to just bully that fort right down. Yeah, this, uh, ooh, nice stun uh, from... Tarand and the Nubarek just now almost uh, getting the kill right there, but this is a dicey territory for the Lizard Wizards. Um, down three levels, and that's something you never want to see as it just, the Lauds and Adian just continue their, uh, their duel in the bomb, but Butcher is in, or uh, Leoric's in a lot of trouble. He burns the March of March the Black, of the Black King, King. Yep. in order to try to avoid that uh, butcher charge, and I, I give him credit for for forward thinking on that one. That was kind of smart, if I'm honest. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, right now, with both forts down, it becomes infinitely harder for Lizard Wizards to keep control of these beacons because, uh, obviously, you face Braxis has apps access to well taps and uh, safety behind their walls, and you face Braxis isn't afford, or I'm sorry, Lizard Wizards isn't afforded the same luxury. Yeah, de most definitely. And we just see both teams kind of cleaning up. You face Braxis uh, going on the ag aggressive right now, taking their camps, wanting even more push out pressure for their lanes and maybe they think about boss here maybe they think about invading going for some camps but a lizard wizards deciding to uh clear the camps and that leaves this bottom bottom camp open for the taking on the side of you face braxis Lizard Wizards definitely more interested in the experience than the Merc camps at this moment. They're just trying to stay safe and get as much experience as they can when it's afforded to them. Yeah, that's, that's a really healthy way pushing into the bottom right now, backed by those uh, Hellions and Ravens and Goliaths. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Winterheart popping her, uh, her Shadow Stock, looking for an early stun, but the Louds gets a root on one. Garrosh pops his... Uh, unstoppable talent and runs away and they really don't want any part of this butcher at the moment oh butcher putting out way too much damage especially with a two level advantage they're just trying to stay in this right now and keep their tower walls a lot tower and walls alive funnily enough funny enough uh butcher isn't even close to leading hero damage right now uh, that it is likely the Tehran, right? It is Tehran with 30k damage at the moment, and on the side, it's on the side of Lizard Wizards. It's Leoric with 25k. We see the full commit from Lizard Wizards on the bottom beacon. They're looking to fight. Nubrek goes in for the stun. The front Ring of Frost comes down. A ton of damage going on to Kyberry's. Kyberry's trying to stay healed up. She's going to go down. Tehran putting out damage all over the Garrosh. Leoric's in a bad spot right now. He's going to go down as well. That's that's not good for Lizard Wizards right now. Nubrik's coming in trying to trap the Genji, <laughs> but Genji with that sick juke dash and gets out of there. He's going to look for safety and try to back to his fort. Takes the juke train home. But this is the problem. Both beacons have been taken from Lizard Wizards. Things are looking kind of bleak right now. They're not out of it yet because they still have both of their keeps up, and they might be able to defend it behind the wall, but man, I don't know. This is going to be a really, a really, really hard defense on the side of the Lizard Wizards. I think they can do it with this comp, though. Um, Jaina, well known for her ability to clear waves, and they they could get a pick out of this and just push the advantage. This game's definitely not over yet. No, definitely not. S see the Blizzard coming down, trying to clear out some of the minion waves. You face Braxis just pushing in, staying safe behind their minion waves, hoping to get this keep. 
Ooh, stun, stun on comes out. Yeah, stun on it too. Vyvanse in a lot of trouble. Has to pop the unstoppable once again. But the snipe from Morales pushes her, pushes Garrosh back in. Atien in a lot of trouble on this Leoric. He's got to be able to pull his uh, pull his health back up. The Divine Shield did help, but there's just too much damage on the side of you face Braxis in this just stacked up Butcher just coming in for the finishing kill. And they Stim Drone the Butcher now looking to get this first game it's done and out of the way. It's just melting away. Good Game God. one, GG goes to you face Braxis. What a set. They drafted so well there a lot of stun on their side and and the uh like i said the damage potential of tehran with hunter's mark is is great for blowing up one target and when you can take one person out on braxis it means a lot yeah absolutely and that butcher did get his quest done fairly early and and they just ran away with it as soon as as soon as that butcher got stacked up they just it was off to the races they had very little way to deal with him between all the lockdown and whew. we'll see yeah. how we'll see how lizard wizard bounce back here uh, well we have seen you face braxis look mortal on other maps but here they always seem like they have a very very strong plan so um to me i'm not too surprised that they were able to take game one but i i know lizard wizards they have a lot of a lot of talent on their side, and I'm sure they're going to adjust and be ready for game two. Definitely, and I'm going to wait for Jimmy to go in first. I fixed the hanger. Oh. <laughs> Hanger is fixed, everyone. You did it, chat. Good job. <laughs> so we're just waiting for the lobby. We're waiting for Jimmy to get in into the lobby first so he can uh, bring us in. So we have the OBS nice and ready to go. So we had a... Uh do we know the map yet? It is going to be Sky Temple. Sky Temple, a very fun map. Often, a lot can a lot doesn't need to necessarily be decided in the early game. Uh, th this is a map where the teams really wrestle the advantage around the midpoint. Usually, between ten and ten and thirteen is when you can really see uh, who has more dominance over the map. So, uh, teams that like to draft into the mid and late game have a little bit of an advantage here. Right, definitely. We'll, uh, we'll just have to go with this then. Me. Invite me. And then we'll just go from there. Yes, this is a best of three. Let's see here. This is Jimmy. Invite to party. Yeah. Not invite to party. There we go. No. Oh, well. Let's see. Where is my good buddy? Get Charlie in here. I'll be interested to see what strategies Lizard Wizards want to employ here on Sky Temple. I'm, I'm assuming they were the ones who were able to pick this map. Yes, Lizard Wizards uh, were indeed... This was their pick. I need to set my hotkeys real quick. Quick reminder to transition scenes when we move to the draft. Yes, I will make sure to do that. Good man. Um, why am I lobby host? DJ has all the people on his list. Oh. Uh, leave the game. They got to remake the lobby. Oh, okay. I okay. No, I'm not stuck in the lobby. Thank you, Blizzard. Oh, thank you for joining us. We're a rather new cast. We are Nexus Commentaries. Our 
mission is to bring you as many amateur games as possible, try to get bods of them, grow the amateur scene in any way that we can help just by commentating and uh, making sure that these matches get casted. Um, if you appreciate that, we like we like it if you hit the follow button. Thank you. Just waiting to get this set up and bring it to you. Get some people in here. Jamie? All right, here we go. Game two, Sky Temple coming up. Now I gotta re readjust my hotkeys. Observer. All right. <laughs> Yeah, apparently it really doesn't want Jimmy in slot one. But I've got it fixed. So, right now we are looking at the score of You Face Braxis 1, Lizard Wizards, nothing, Lizard Wizards, hoping to bounce back in this game, two to tie it up. You don't want to lose in the semis. You don't want to lose at all, to be honest, but... Semis, we pass. yeah, semis is, is just like almost. Right, right. We casted a lot of you face Braxis, and uh, they've looked strong throughout. It's hard to bet against them at this point, especially with such with the dominance they showed on the first map. They're going to have to really uh, pay attention during the draft here for um, Lizard Wizards, and and make sure they don't give you face Braxis something like they did last game, where they had all those stuns on their side. Definitely, uh, and uh, they're definitely going to take that into account this game too but i feel like uh the globals will probably play in to this draft a bit stronger this time so we'll definitely see how this uh this works out i'm ready with the transition button everyone <laughs> i am ready you'll to get to see the beginning of the draft instead of our ugly mugs so yes good for you guys so it looks like we have both teams ready here. Uh, wait, we haven't gotten them ready for... Okay, there we go. <laughs> both teams are ready, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into the draft here at Sky Temple. Transition! <laughs> Let's go! Best, Good job. Best transition NA. Easy. You, you did the host stuff. I did the host stuff. Thank you, based Willie. First pick our first ban here for on the side of you face Braxis and and they're globals are gonna get banned Kay. yeah I mean you know Dahaka's very strong on this map this is arguably one of his best maps with all the uh, brush around in the important areas and uh, he's just he's just a force to be reckoned with on Sky Temple and if you got the first pick and you don't plan on taking him there's no point in giving him up yeah no Definitely not. He's just too good on a map like this. We'll see what Lizard Wizards are thinking. They were pretty quick with their uh, drafts and bans last time. Uh, quickly banning out Kel'Thuzad once again. Yeah. Kel'Thuzad very strong right now, obviously, so no surprises there. And with uh, the tight spaces that... Sky Temple affords team fights to take place in. Uh, Kel'Thuzad gets a lot of value. It's not nearly as hard to land those uh, chains of Kel'Thuzad onto two and just ruin somebody's day from there. Definitely. You face Braxis, known for taking their time in the draft, really thinking about what they want. So, what do you think they're thinking here? Probably some globals, right? Maybe a Falstad? A Falstad or a, a strong healer, or a Garrosh. <laughs> Garrosh has proven to be first pick material in all the games we've casted thus far. Just a strong hero, hero pick. Definitely. Vala coming in for that first pick on the side of Lizard Wizards. Again, a really strong pick, and I love the ETC. If they're going stage dive, he's got that pseudo global presence. It's going to be really, really valuable. If he doesn't, Vala will get a lot of value in terms of getting damage off. Definitely. 
So we're going to see what you face Braxis is thinking here. Something to complement the Garrosh. Obviously, anybody with traps or stuns is uh, very, very suited to uh, fit with Garrosh. Electing to go with Rhaegar as their healer. Rhaegar's had a resurgence as of late as a solo healer. Yeah, definitely. He just provides too much value in everything he does right now. Between his ability to solo camps early um, and Ancestral obviously being the largest heal in the game right now. And for a support, his damage numbers can be very impressive. Yeah, Bark Bark is uh, nothing to uh, sneeze at. <laughs> Nipping at your butt every time you try to run away. And, and so. the new Brightwing follow. Uh, is this, are we in the balance patch now? I yeah, believe we, we are. We so. are in the balance patch, so this is the new Brightwing. So we're going to see how this turns out. I hope it's a Q build Brightwing. <laughs> you always hope I for the really, shenanigans. I always, I always hope for a Q-Build Brightwing, even when it wasn't a thing. I still wanted it to be a thing. With the buffs to her globals, I would expect to see the global picks, but you never know what they're thinking right now. That arcane shot could be that arcane shot talent at level one could prove to be very valuable. Yeah, I. What it, it's uh, if it hits somebody in the center, it, the cooldowns reduced to what one second or something like something ridiculous. Yep. Imagine that in uh, team fights around those uh, temples. That's just going to be idiotic. It can be a lot of damage, but it is very mana hungry to do that. So Brightwing is not known for having great mana sustain on her abilities as is. So I feel like talenting into that might require a lot of uh, a lot of restrictions. You can really spam it as much as you'd think. Definitely. And we're but looking... I have yet to see it in action, so I could be completely wrong. This could just be a legit thing. Right. Uh, we're looking at the Morales ban. Definitely not wanting to give up Stim Drone onto that Vala. Uh, that would get way too much work. Or for or Medivac, for that matter, because it's yeah. just basically another global. That, that is true. Um, we're looking at the next two picks from Lizard Wizards, and if I'm them, I'm looking at a healer and maybe another tank. Yeah, you're going to have to match the double support that uh, that you face Braxis has drafted. Uh, whether you do that by trying to mitigate healing through um, isolating targets and blowing them up, or you match with two supports yourself. But they take Stukov and Sonya, so pretty much as you called. Um, Stukov, very strong right now. His healing spreads pretty quickly through the teammates, and he's able to blow that up with bio kill switch and create a burst healing situation when it's needed. And uh, Sonya and ATC and Vala all have their own forms of self-sustain. And with Tassadar still on the table, they might elect to go with that. Uh, true, but Uther is also on the board as well. And Uther would provide an invaluable service if it's a mosh pit ETC. Or, I mean, even to Sonya, divine shielding her and letting her jump in and go nuts on people would be very very beneficial yeah especially on a double support if you can blow one of them up you know, it, it, things tend to snowball in your favor definitely so we'll see what these last two picks out of you face braxis are gonna be if i'm them i'm looking for another tank and obviously a dps at this point they don't they're lacking in damage yeah no damage really on the side uh and they're going to answer that with Tychus and Alaric. We haven't seen Tychus in a little bit here. Uh, very strong against Double Warrior still. His range isn't quite what it used to be, but a, uh, a strong Tychus player can put out a lot of damage very quickly on high health targets. Yeah, and uh, between ETC and Sonya, those are those are his prime choices. But we see the Stukov in the solo spot, and instead they up the the sublime split push of Zagera. <laughs> yeah, Zagera... Her effectiveness increases the bigger the map is, especially with her Nidus network, able to travel throughout the map and get to key objectives or, you know, split off and do her split push things. Getting getting lane um, advantage and taking down the forts of the other team first is the way to victory in this map, especially if you can uh, snowball a boss. Absolutely, and I do believe we've just covered our 200th follower. Oh, wow. Yay, thank you guys. You, we everyone. appreciate all the follows. Absolutely. Oh, here we are at Sky Temple. Who do you think? Uh, I feel like Lizard Wizards had the better draft there. I'm worried that I'm worried about the double support because Brightwing feels kind of like an X Factor since she was so recently changed and 
reading the notes to me, she f- looked like she got a lot stronger, but maybe maybe I'm overvaluing that, and she's not as strong as I think. I don't know what to think right now. I I'm not really sure. Wh- I, I I really think Lizard Wizards won this draft pretty pretty handily. On the blue side, we have you face Braxis. On the Alaric, we have Winterheart. On Garage, we have Bruce. On Rhaegar, we have Delouds. On Tychus, we have Emperor Juice. And on Brightwing, we have You're My Hero. And on the side of Lizard Wizards, we've got Vyvanse. On the ETC, Beckwin. On the Vala, Selenity. On that Zagara, Kai Berries. On the Stukov, it seems. And Adian on the Barbarian Princess. Both teams given the thumbs up of good luck. A little sportsmanship between the two. Absolutely. Let me see Winterheart just making a bum rush for that vision. Die for vision. Always die for vision. We have uh, we have Selenity setting up bottom lane. Uh, sh- going to be an advantage for Zagara, but the whole team is rotating down. It looks like they're going to try and answer to Zagara's early push. Uh Zagara wisely staying back, though, because she doesn't have vision of anybody on the map. No, not really. And uh, Zagara, you know, obviously wants to be careful, not give up early deaths. Um, but she is facing that Brightwing and Alarak in the bottom, and she should be able to handle that just fine. As we see the Sonya in the top, but Vyvanse going for a ride. Power slides on out of there. Hits the, gonna gu- be- yeah, hits the guitar to heal himself up. But this bottom lane is going to be really difficult for Salinity now that I think about it. Between all the uh, creep clear that they can perform on her, it's it's going to be a little difficult. Yeah, Brightwing's Arcane Shot, very good at clearing creep. And uh, sorry to inform you, Zex, that Brightwing did indeed go hyper shift in taking the increased cooldown on her face. <laughs> it is the smart play when you're looking for the global. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Doesn't mean I have both, to like it, though. Both teams uh, kind of trying to push an advantage early. Oh, we see a toss on to uh, ETC, but he's able to slide right out of there. ETC, one of the stronger counters to Garrosh. Yeah, the ability to power slide on out of there uh, and stun everything on his way out is, is really valuable to prevent any further aggression onto him. And we see this, uh, we see you face Braxis, uh, Emperor Juice go, about to go down but manages to survive on the Tyke as the uh, silence does come out to dissuade any further aggression from that particular area. And you face Braxis is uh, securing this uh, mid temple pretty handily. Zagara being left in the bottom unmolested. She's going to get a lot of value this temple phase. And I am kind of surprised that uh, Lizard Wizards aren't really forcing this top temple. They're, they've got two going there now, but my little late in my opinion uh they were likely waiting for the um for the rotations to make sure they didn't send one or two up there and then suddenly a uh, five-man squad came up on them right now we have alaric going in but there's three there he's gonna have to be careful especially with only tychus backing him tychus being very squishy in the early game bruce is coming in he's looking for a toss he gets it etc power slides on out stuns the Rhaegar. Rhaegar jumps back in drops the slow totem they're taking a lot of damage Rhaegar is trying to escape and heal out ETC also taking a lot of damage. The phase shift comes in and gets the healing on DeLouds. Winterheart taking a lot of damage from the Sonya. ETC power slides through and traps Alaric. Winterheart goes down from all the damage. Bruce also taking too much damage from the Vala and the Sonya. And that is going to be a handily one temple fight for uh, Lizard Wizards. Yeah, well played out of them right there. There, They forced the Brightwing top, letting Salinity here on the Zagara get so much value right now, getting the bottom uh, towers out of the way, leaving, uh, leaving this bottom fort very, very exposed at this point for that second temple that's going to be coming bottom here very shortly. And that's why the Zagara pick is so strong on Sky Temple. It's hard to match her bottom, her uh, single lane push, especially if she stays somewhere like the bottom lane when the first two temples always spawn top. And uh, the team with the well tends to have a better advantage when the second shrine phase comes up. And uh, Zagara is going to probably target that after she gets the tower. Yeah, and I really don't blame her for that. But we do see the the Rhaegar taking that mid or that bottom siege camp um, once again. His ability to just solo camps can't be understated here. 
It, he gets so much value out of this. Yeah. Yeah, there are no other supports that can clear a camp like Rhaegar, that's for sure. So definitely taking advantage of that and um, trying to slow the Zagara down by taking the uh, the siege camp. Yeah, Vyvan's uh, getting tossed around just a little bit, manages to power his slide his way to safety. Everything seemed to be going uh, just fine on the side of Lizard Wizards. Rhaegar taking another camp for his team. Pretty good timing, or uh, I'm sorry, you face Braxis was taking that camp as uh, Lizard Wizards take their own camp first. So both teams looking to get that pressure going before this next temple phase. But Sonya's all alone up top, and uh, she doesn't know that Alaric and uh, now Brightwing are right there, so she's going to have to be careful in that lane and probably give up that uh, advantage. Yeah, they both show themselves at this point, and now... Uh, Sonia decides she's going to go join her friend. No, she decides she's going to go back up to the top as Kai Berries and company take that bottom siege camp on the side of Lizard Wizards. And they're up a full level. They're definitely going to be hitting 10 first. So you face Braxis has to decide how badly they want this bottom temple. Sagara getting trapped there by the pull, but there was no follow-up because the team hadn't made the rotation yet. An unfortunate break for you face practice because there was a chance for them to gain a little bit of an edge. Yeah, and right Sonya. wing's going to go down in the top lane. Yeah, a nice kill by Adian right there to uh, punish that punish that bright wing for sticking around a little too long up top. And now there's pretty much no way you face Braxis, Braxis can safely take this temple. Uh, especially with ultimate or uh, heroics coming online for Lizard Wizards. Lizard Wizards bouncing back in a really big way this game too. Yeah, you face Braxis is going to be forced to just sit back and soak this minion experience while Lizard Wizards maintains dominance over the objectives. Um, I I don't think they can boss here yet, but uh, they're they're approaching that territory, especially if you face Braxis makes a mistake. Yeah, definitely. Um... I mean, this is just pretty safe play on the side of Lizard Wizards right now, and probably even safer on the side of you face, you face Braxis. There, there's there was literally nothing they could do right there. They had to give up that fort. They would have forced it. Uh, they definitely would have been a lot of trouble right there. For sure. So teams. Antian. Yeah. Tears are just kind of resetting at the moment. It looks like there's a little bit of action between Sonya and the Alarak up top. With Toss onto the ETC in the mid lane. And Beckwin definitely wanting, wanting blood right there. Decided to try to pursue that Garrosh a little bit harder. And Uh-oh. Atien on a little bit of trouble. Gets uh, polymorphed and silenced. But being the beefy barbarian princess that she is, she just walks away from it. The stun goes out in the toss on ATC, but we keep seeing it time and time again. The power slide out and then followed up by the amp. Yeah, that was, uh, it was just really nice heads up play from the ETC right there. And it even better coming out of the the Stukov right there to always have that, that silence up and ready to go. Cleanse followed by the Ancestral. And with the Temples coming up soon, that's definitely an ultimate you don't want down. That's a fairly long ultimate to shove onto Bruce right there pushes him away and we see the Odin come out another ultimate being uh, burned before temple phases come up. You face Braxis going for broke here trying to get some sort of advantage they're just gonna take the well down here I think that's about all they're gonna get out of that Odin though. But I don't see them getting much more uh, Bruce kind of posturing himself looking for maybe a pull onto somebody but I mean that and I'm not sure that was the, the right call from you face Braxis to burn those ultimates right there. Ancestral and Odin down for this temple phase. Well, temple the Ancestral had to come out to save Garash at the moment. Garash was taking a lot of damage and was going to go down. Well, uh, the question is, do you just let him die and him eat that, that death timer that's less than an Ancestral? No, no, not in that situation. Mm. You have to keep the Ancestral away. You use the Ancestral to keep people alive. That's fair. Both teams taking one temple right now, and uh, obviously with Lizard Wizards in the lead, they're electing to also split push with the Zagara in the top lane. 
Yeah, Zagara just getting so much value this game. It's like she's got uh, worms in the top and the bottom, letting her just rotate freely between those two lanes. And we've got Alarak uh, looking to maybe shut her off there a little bit, but Solemnity was going to try to get into her uh, Nidus, but decided against it. And, and she's uh, going to be sticking around to harass Winterheart just a little bit more. And I'll, I'll admit, this is the first time I've ever seen Winterheart on Alarak. And so this is pretty surprising to me. We usually saw Alaric banned against uh, you face Braxis in a lot of games. A lot of people scouting that Alaric out and uh, banning it. Uh, Lizard Wizard's not caring so much and letting it through. And uh, that's because they had a solid plan for Sky Temple, and it's paying off right now. Yeah, and uh, we see that the, multi the Monster Hunter build coming out from the Valor just now, just going uh, crazy with the arrows, with the uh, repeating arrow. And tr uh, that's uh, going to be a god-awful amount of burst onto a target. For sure. All right, Kyberry's getting silent stuff. A nice bounce from the ETC, followed by an even better power slide, but Kyberry's still in a world of hurt. She's definitely not going to survive this. The Odin does come down, and I believe this is they're going to go for boss now. Yeah, trying to make sure they get the most out of this Odin and that pick off of Kyberry's. They're going to move right to the boss and try to exert pressure on the bottom lane and get back in this. Zagara does grab the fort on up top in the meantime um beckwood and vivance and adian just kind of snoping everything out right now and uh the grenade comes out from the tychus bounces vivance up just a little bit and then uh they uh, lizard wizards decide it's time to defend this boss yeah, the Bridge of Death, not really where you want to fight. It doesn't look like they're going to be engaged there. They're going to be able to walk up with the boss and stay behind it, potentially get these walls and, and uh, towers out of the way. Yeah, and this is where that Monster Hunter arrow is going to come in really, really handy on the side of uh, on that that uh, Bala, shredding that boss, boss's health very, very rapidly. Um, they'll get the... the the well right there, but I don't think they're going to get much else out of this. This is a little risky, especially with 16s coming online for the Lizard Wizards. Yeah, Winterheart a little far out, trying to mount up and get us get to the uh, get to the safety of his team, and it looks like they're going to successfully get away. And uh, they really needed some experience and to get back in this game, and that's exactly what they did with that boss push right there, Zex. Yeah, absolutely. You're just a half a level down right now. But the big problem is, is that that front top keep wall is gone. So if they take that top, if they take that top temple, it's definitely going to get that fort. Yeah, we, the the keep would go down if the uh, top the top. Ch <laughs> I'm sorry, the top temple is channeled by lizard wizards. So they're electing to stay in the middle and and get get the value there because it's less likely to be contested. Uh, but uh, yeah, still, uh, the, we see this front keep uh, wall go down in the middle, and they decide to break off from that mid temple, e just leaving ETC behind, and they've decided that they're going to push with this Zagara and her siege uh, mercs in the bottom. Yeah, the global likely to come out for Brightwing to hop into the fray when they need to. Uh, seems like right now, though, they're just happy to uh, clear out the waves and, and make sure that the camps aren't taken by the other team. We do see the stage dive come out from ETC. Beckwin on to You're My Hero right there. Double uh, arrow right there. Reign of Vengeance does come on, and You're My Hero gets the Ancestral to uh, save her life. Yeah, that's a big heal on Brightwing. Uh, Brightwing, very strong at sustaining for her teammates, but not so much at healing herself, so that's where the Rhaegar comes in handy. Yeah, big I... team fight going on now, though. The silence pool is down, making things difficult for you face Braxis. Sonya spinning, spinning to win all over You're My Hero. A lot of damage going on to ETC. ETC gets out. Addison's not going to be so fortunate, though. He gets trapped by the Garrosh, swooped in, and the team cleans him up. Oh, the slow from the Alarak Lightning uh, doing work on that Stukov just now. The uh, 
multi-shot from Beck when and uh, ETC is gonna end up going down here. That's a you two face for Brax is suddenly in complete control right here, pick, picking down two heroes late and clearing this, uh, clearing the vision off the map, getting control of the map, just trying to put themselves back in a position where they can try to end this game. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to end. I don't think they'll be able to get this keep either, but they're definitely going to be able to put some damage onto it. The silent, ooh, that multi-shot did so much damage right there. The groundbreaker from Garrosh doesn't really hit anything. Neither does the Reign of Vengeance out of the Vala. But Selenity's still just getting tons of value in this bottom lane. She's probably going to be able to get these bottom towers. Uh, but... Uface the pushing getting, power is Sakara. Yeah, you face Braxis getting aggressive, uh, cleaning that uh, that bo that top night camp up, and this is this is uh, where Zagara really shines when shines when you just leave her alone. The problem is there's so much pressure in the top lane right now, and and you face Braxis is positioning themselves to be back in this game. They were they were down most of the early game, and. Uh, now they're even level talents and ready to uh, try and wrestle control of the shrine away from uh, Lizard Wizards. Yeah, but uh, Selenity there on the Zagara just getting so much work done on the side of Uface or uh, on Uface Braxis's bottom keep. It's just a Brightwing versus a Zagara. Brightwing's not going to be able to stand there forever. Nice multi shot followed by the uh, Hungry Arrow onto the Vala. Bella might be in a little bit of trouble, taking a little bit of damage. The Odin does get popped, and he's looking to just start sieging people up. Vyvanse was ready to just drop. Ooh, Ooh Bella gets us. Yeah, she's going to go down, and that's a key pickup. But look look at the mid lane. That creep, is that those creeps are about to take that mid keep, and Zagara has just been running roughshod over... The, the bottom keep. Yeah, yeah, bottom keep does go down. And Zagara, if she really, really wanted to, could just walk over and sneeze on that keep and just take it. Yeah, that keep's not long for this world. There's no uh no helper there there's no repair bots on the side of uh on the side of U Face Braxis, so that that keep's likely to go down very soon. Yeah, but U Face Braxis and uh, Lizard Wizards kind of posturing for the boss but they've got to be careful. There's a very, very small window where Lizard Wizards will have ultimates before, and they the Storm Talents are coming out from you, uh, Lizard Wizards. That is so hard to say. Well, Vala is back from the graveyard, and both teams are at level 20 taking their Storm Talents, and we're going to see a very major fight take place for this boss. Yeah, this is probably going to decide the game right here. Um, this is definitely when Stage Dive does oh, come wow. out. But they do get the boss. Uh, you face Braxis. The and, uh, right wing dropped the Emerald win at the perfect time, not allowing you face Brax or not allowing Wizard Wizards to get anywhere close to it. Now we see a ton of damage going out onto the Garrosh, but Garrosh is able to get healed up, and now they're going to push with this boss. Ation taking a lot of damage. He's in danger, but the Rhaegar elects not to chase him down. They're going to go around and try to push with this boss. Yeah, Beckwin also in a lot of trouble just now. She's going to go down there, and that may be the opening, but Zagara in the mid is going to take that keep. That, yeah, that keep is definitely going down, but Zagara can't afford to stay around and try to pressure it herself, so she's going to back. And there's a healthy minion wave on this fort, so someone from you face Braxis needs to go back and preserve this shield, because they are taking core, core damage right now. Yeah, they are. The boss is almost dead, thankfully enough. I don't think uh, you face Braxis is going to have enough damage to do it. Um, Bruce does drop the taunt down. Sonya does go down. This may be B, a GG, 46, 43, the core is getting lower. ETC doing everything he can. The silence comes out, but it looks like you face Braxis. It's going to take this 2-0 surprisingly. Wow. I really thought Lizard Wizards had that game right there. Yeah, that was very well played by you face Braxis, showing the experience they've shown throughout this entire Chair League tournament as such a dominant team. Yeah, absolutely. I... This is the damage that Winterheart put out. 53,000 on the Alaric Vala. Impressive 69,000 damage herself, obviously. Uh, being able to target t 
target Garrosh quite a bit during that game. Yeah, that was... Uh, I am really surprised Lizard Wizards did not come away with that. That, that uh, Zagara got so much value out of that, um, taking two keeps by herself. Yeah, we had that big turning point, though, when you face Braxis got a pick on uh, Kyberries on Stukov, I believe, and then they were able to take the boss, and after that, they were they had stabilized that early lead that Zagara had uh, provided, and they just kept scrapping away and pushing until they were able to get the key pick at the right time. Yeah, they uh, they really did. And at, you face Braxis, you know, really showing um, why they went undefeated in the regular season, and they are going to move on to the finals, the Division Two finals next week. Um, good stuff to them. I mean, sorry, uh, yeah. condolences, I guess, to Lizard Wizards, but uh, like you face Braxis was just absolutely ready to, you know, clutch it down right there. Looking back, I have to wonder if the Zagara had stayed there instead of going back with the Nidus Worm. Could she have provided enough damage behind the four, the three catapults and the two bruisers that were, or the two siege minions that were putting damage on the core? I mean, it was quite close at the end there. I I feel like, in retrospect, yes, I think uh, she could have base raced it because uh, she did have those two siege camps. The uh, the core was down to about sixty three percent, and. But I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, um, that was the only match we have tonight, I believe. Yeah, that was the uh, only one, sadly, we had this week for you guys. Um, we want to thank you. I want to thank Kai Berries and Selenity for the hosts tonight so all of their fans could indeed watch this game. Uh, shout outs to those two. Um, yeah, we really appreciate that. Yeah. We. Uh, like I said before, we are Nexus Commentaries. We're a new uh, commentary team. We're bad now. We won't be bad forever. We're getting better every time. Um, if you even remotely were entertained by Charlie's Closet tonight, please hit the follow button. Um, we do have we do have a sub button. If hashtag you break the hanger. Bra hashtag break the hanger. Um, we do have a sub button. You get the uh, first blood emote from our channel. Um, pretty spammable in my opinion um, but that's gonna do it for tonight we'll be back uh, next week with a division one game between Rixer for kids division one leader and I don't know who yet their their opponent has not been determined just yet let's take a quick look yes yeah, still hasn't been determined yet for uh, for Rixer for Kids. That should be coming soon, but we're definitely coming back next Thursday with the cast. Thank you to Jimmy, our OBS. You can you can say something, buddy, if you want. You can. I know you want to say something. Stay tight. <laughs> there we go. So that's gonna do it. Do it for tonight, everybody. Thank you for watching. Enjoy some tunes on your way out the door again. Hit that follow, hit that sub. We love everyone who does that. Pin, pin, pinball.